Technically, this is a supplemental select board meeting because there's more than three members present. It's also the sewer district meeting, I guess, at the same time. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm not sure who runs what meeting or what, so... Um, well, I'll just say um, I, I'm Stephanie. I am the current uh, board of the um, trustees here, and I'd like to welcome all our guests. And I'm just really looking forward to this opportunity to share information. And I'm going to turn it over to Jay Wheeler to kind of be our MC. Okay. Before we start, uh, if I may. Yes, fire up. Yes, it's an official meeting. We need to salute the flag. Yes, we always do. She missed. We stand. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I just uh, I'm going to move quick. I just wanted to give you guys a kind of build a picture. It's a, it's an opportunity. Glad to have everybody here um, to share basically what we've been through. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, James was interested in the financial page, so I printed out a fresh one. We don't have a, you know, the checking account isn't real big, but uh, we've kept it fairly tight. We got a new auditor. I think uh, Lisa Houston started that several years ago, four years ago. And, uh, you know, as he told us, we said, well, geez, can we save money and, and invest it and make money? And basically his advice was to, if we had any money, is to reinvest it. And for us, it was a no-brainer because we've been chasing things that had short return on investment, you know, five years, seven years, three year, whatever it was. Plus we have uh, also have environmental responsibility. So we have to we have to do those. Um, the big the big page with the green on it. I just made that I pulled that from our uh, capital asset list and I was looking for this picture but this it kind of uh, fell into what I wanted to talk about. I, I came in uh, 2008 shortly after the by the end of the next year, Prime was gone. They took 65% of the income, and we had a plant that really didn't work on what we were getting. We got a trickle coming through here, right? And uh, we had gone to CDBG to try and change some things. We had some expensive blowers down here that were 200 horsepower and a 75. I mean, they were huge, and we just didn't need it. Our electric bill was 150 grand a month. We also had dewatering machines right across the way here for dewatering slugs that were 300 horsepower centrifuges that, you know, for years, years, several years, till we got a change, we wouldn't even run them. We tried to not run them on, on a bill or, or one month or two months if we could because we had all these tanks, we just let it hang on there because it would set the demand charge so high. It, it just cost us a lot of money. Anyway, so we were, what we were after with this money from CDBG was we call it an op optimization and we were looking to exchange some of that high power use equipment uh, and improve a process. It didn't work even after all our work of uh, going around town and doing a survey, an income survey, to prove uh, the, uh, the US Census. It all worked out fine because right after that we learned about, uh, we started hearing about nitrogen and possible limits someday and all the stuff that's gone back and forth uh, about that for years and if we'd have made some changes it may have been too much ahead of time. Shortly after that we had an issue with the school street station and I think that was the last time we had selectmen together We uh, right after we rebuilt that and the work we did on um, the census paid off because we used it with USDA to get a loan in order to do that rebuild. All right. Um, one of the great things that came out of that is that following our, the station rebuild, the package that we had was 1.4 million, and uh, we had about the 0.4 was the grant part we had, that we had left over. Um, the station didn't it cost us just over 1 million, you know, to do that upgrade, and we still had that 330,000 left, which was great. It worked out for us because we got to do an improvement in order to improve our process. Just for the mental picture, this is the big plant that Prime left us. Um, we have these giant concrete tanks, and uh, those will never go anywhere. We can still use them. The problem is that you have to have the right equipment 
in order to run them the right size blowers, mixers, pumps, and all that sort of stuff. What we did with that leftover money around 2014, I believe it was. No, it was later. It was uh, later when Mike came here. 15, 17. Yeah. 17. yeah. We, we basically built a train in one third of the plant. We built a BNR, biological nutrient removal, right? Yeah, I never get it right. Basically, just uh, playing with the bugs so they do the dirty work. And uh, this worked great, to be honest. It really has. Um, that said, moving along quick. Is going down the list of stuff that's in green, I just want to point out I colored that because those, those are things that we have <clears throat> we have loans we have debts for it. the stuff in the I noted it were some bigger items that are uh, in black boxes were things that we pulled out of whatever we had for savings or whatever we could um, here in the middle of the building the middle of the page you see the the furnace in the operations building we had an oil burner there that was rated for 12 and a half gallons a minute for oil and uh, we really wanted to do something with that for years and not having the money we ended up was right after CMP came here and they said hey you built your office in the middle of our right away you got to tear it down it's like what <laughs> um, after getting through that all that long negotiation we got on the bend it around the office but there was a narrow strip on the far side of the of the right away which had always been there but it just wasn't used and we sold a little, I don't know what it was, an acre, two acres that ended up being to the metal site because it, they had no, no good for us, but it got us that, that boiler, right? Whatever we could to, uh, to move along. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Any questions? Farther up, I guess, it, you know, some of the bigger things was, uh, I mentioned the dewatering machine. Yeah, be those big power yeah guzzling machines we had the dewatering machines up there towards the top we uh, bought the sw the smallest uh, Huber inclined screw which is about the size of a wheelbarrow and uses I think about 15 horsepower at the max as opposed to 300 and no, it's, it's, like, it's like a horsepower yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and, and uh, oh really yeah it's yeah. just it's almost nothing and it works fabulous we ended up we bought another of the next machine yeah the next bigger machine here a few years ago um, so that's how we replaced that and then it was the leftover money from the school street station where we got to replace the blowers down back because it was all part of refitting that one tank with the equipment in order to make it work and uh, that's where we started now um, since then you see it 2017 is when Mike came here and uh, he taught us a lot of things. Uh, one, we, we started uh, trying to get more septage um, to help create more cash flow. And what it's allowed us to do, excuse me, is that a lot of the things that we do have, um, well, let me back up. I wanted to say the only, the only one of these investments, the Green Lines, was the School Street loan from the USDA that we actually had to make an increase to the users in order to be able to afford to pay that. Since then, basically 2017 when Mike came and trying to start to build that the uh, septage because we had all this tankage, we've been able to not charge users for the improvements we've made. And you know the best part about being able to do a, t a tour in the daylight is that especially it's all it's due to Mike but we only have a couple of guys here our staff isn't bigger, but the project they tackled has built a place that uh, we almost refit it. When Prime left, we were at the 20-year end of the previous upgrade, and we had a bunch of crap. At School Street, this place was all shot, and uh, Mike has got uh, everything quite well replaced. We have a lot of automation. We have a lot of one of our latest projects is tying in our, and thanks to the town as well, because we have hooked up on the water tower, we're tying in the pump stations to the main control here. Well, heck, I think Mike can see him at home on his computer. So you have better alarms, better control of, you know, what's going on. Yeah, actually, you can save money. So that, uh, we've got a couple more pieces to finish for that project, but it's, uh, there's just a lot of things throughout the whole place. I know Mike would like to get on the list 
I'd like to get on a list, but you know, we won't keep you. We can talk about it. Anyway, <clears throat> what that brings us to in in 2020, the advent of COVID, and it, we we uh, is with the advent of uh, stimulus money or the possible chance of stimulus money. We put in what we needed to put in as far as applications and intent in order to have ourselves in line for any kind of financing through the stimulus funds. And uh, at the beginning of this year, we had to move forward with that. We had to put uh, put together a package that Steve uh, just submitted not too long ago to uh, SRF. Yep, um, Maine DEP. Maine DEP. And uh, they, you know, as far as what we needed and what was coming, and and so I just wanted to cover the point up until that happened, and uh, you know, begin the year where Steve took off as far as doing the evaluation of the plant, where we stand, and uh, where we could be needing to go. I'll leave it for you. All right. Well, thank you, Jay. Um, Jay did ask me to attend tonight and speak about the project we did for the district. And this one was the treatment plant improvements project. Um, what you do typically is a report to evaluate the facility and you come up with cost estimates for capital improvements. And this was necessary, number one, to meet the clean water SRF requirements. You need an engineering report and you need to document the need and identify the projects. And then also, um, that gets you on the list when you submit it to the state in order to get um, clean water SRF funding. So the report was done and, and we did submit it to Maine DEP in September and they came back with that they received it and that the projects um, in their opinion would be eligible pending the permit requirements. Um, so I, I wasn't quite sure what you wanted to cover for subjects but Jay Gave me a little bit of a heads up. Do you want me to hand out the write up that I did? That yeah, we can. Um, it you, would, nobody it has to read it now, but at least um, yeah. I get what it. I'm supposed to say is on your sheet. I only made ten copies, so one of us, maybe I, you and I, can share. Oh yeah, you guys. Have had them. <laughs> We've seen them, so <laughs> they should have slept again. Okay. Mostly, I think Steve is. Uh, I mean, one of the things you started with is is going to D, DEP to find out, you know. Uh, one of the things I think on James's list was permitting and the process. Every four years, generally, you're supposed to get a new license, a new discharge license. Our last license we got in 2003. That's how long it is since we've got one. It's kind of odd. Some places otherwise get them. It might have been somewhat due to prime. I know 2007 we had a draft, but it never got carried forward. And uh, so we're waiting for that. But right now, I think the big hold is this whole nitrogen deal in the river and that's I'll let you take it from there exactly yeah the uh, the main DEP in, in looking at our report um, it was actually based on a meeting we had with the state to determine what the future permit limits might look like and at the time they, they couldn't guarantee it but the people in charge indicated that um, most likely the plant would have a total nitrogen limit and that is based on, you know, the Great Bay Estuary and the nitrogen concerns there. Um, and um, Maine was aware of it. I think four communities in Maine that are in the Great Bay Estuary. And so they all would have to deal with a nitrogen limit. Uh, and they, they actually calculated it based on what the um, New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services came up with uh, nitrogen allocation. I think, Mike, it was 29 pounds a yeah, day so of total nitrogen at the at your permitted flow of 1.1 mgd um, that also would translate to a nitrogen limit of three to <clears throat> five milligrams per liter this, this is the nitrogen being discharged into the river you're talking about correct yeah and and what the permit does is allow you to discharge based on the assumptive capacity of the river or any water quality issues and so as long as you meet that permit, um, you can discharge into the river. So we had planned for a nitrogen limit, which actually meant a major upgrade to the treatment plant. And so that's what we focused our study on. Um, there are other parameters that, that could be wild cards here, and I just listed them 
Um, I sh I'm sure you're all familiar with PFOS or PFOA, the uh, forever chemicals. They were um, of concern, and I think, Mike, you're testing in your sledge for those now? Uh, we're actually testing on the effluent. The yeah. state is funding a 10-month testing program. Yeah, so, so that's a concern that um, hopefully there won't be any of those forever chemicals in the wastewater effluent or in the sludge. Um, aluminum is always um, a concern and, and, and is coming up for water quality issues. But sometimes treatment plants might use an aluminum chemical to remove phosphorus. And so uh, it removes the phosphorus but might be adding aluminum to the effluent. So those kind of concerns. Um, so with that, um, I have a project description and actually a graphic on the last page. And it's the capital improvements program that we had proposed. Um, we broke it up into two phases, and you know, the, the district would set priorities based on need and also on available funding. But um, the, the first and major item that has to be done is converting two of the aeration tanks to um, a process that will both remove phosphorus and nitrogen biologically. Um, we were fortunate in that the plant was designed for 1.1 million gallons a day to handle um, tannery waste, a, a good portion of tannery waste. And in that, the aeration tanks um, were actually very large extended air, long detention time aeration tanks. This gives us the volume to be able to treat, treat a residential type waste um, in a shorter time period and add on uh, different tankage and not to um, oversimplify but it's as simple as putting in um, unaerated tanks and mixing them and recycling the sludges in order to affect certain growth of bacteria and so that's the process that's proposed um, there's some hydraulic limitations if we go to this process we, we will probably not have enough um, difference in elevation between the aeration tanks and the primary clarifiers so we, we will uh, we've sized it so that we will not use the primary clarifiers so that's the program um, it's uh, 7.3 uh, million dollars in uh, major upgrades and then another three million dollars in um, additional requirements so um, that's the program, roughly $10 million that we looked at, and what we did was actually look at user rate impacts. Um, so that's really the last part of my uh, discussion, is just the idea that if we're funding a $10 million program, um, we go to the main municipal bond bank with an SRF loan, and we borrow at 20 years um, a certain amount and pay it off in that 20 years, but the user rates go up. And so we looked at that user rate impacts um, and what that fee would be to raise the rates. And that's actually, being, you know, the fourth, thir third and fourth page in. Um, the major upgrades and then the additional considerations are two different tables. But it, it will, without any kind of grant funding or loan forgiveness, which I think Berwick is eligible for, depending on um, how your census, uh, you know, uh, your mean household income in your census area mm. goes, and uh, you have to be under a population of 10,000 if you want RD grant money. So those factors. And then the SRF program will look at loan forgiveness for you. But we didn't add any kind of loan forgiveness or grants into this assessment. And it, it shows the two different levels of, of user rate increases um, in these other two tables. So these are clipped out from the report. So that's why they're not looking uniformly. Um, the only other thing, um, I wasn't sure if you wanted to talk about it, uh, Jay, was just the equity buy-in fee and the system development charge. Yeah. When I, um, you know, when I took a further look at our um, system development charge, that's what we call it, um, I recognize that the plant capacity is only one train, one out of those three trains. That was the only train that was upgraded to, a, you know, be in our process. 
And so we really only have a third of that capacity. In fact, we did the report with that one train modified and came up with it would handle uh, 290,000 gallons a day. And so that's why the system development charge changed because we changed the capacity from 1.1 million per minute to 290,000 gallons per day actual. So, you know, the facility now is permitted for 1.1 MGD. That's a real economic benefit. If you build out the treatment plant, um, you can discharge as much as that. But right now, that plant is basically built out a third for a BNR process. Um, and, and that's the difference. So that was the only number change, and we ended up with a, a system development charge of 1391. Uh, per equivalent dwelling unit. We also have the ability to um, change that based on organic load or solids load. If you, an industry came in and had a high BOD, you could actually make that calculation and do that change. Uh, how are you taking the uh, phosphorus and the nitrogen out of, out of it? What are you, you said something about, how, what are you using to do that? How does that work? So um, the proposed treatment plant biologically yeah. we'll have unaerated tanks and depending on how we recycle flows it will either remove phosphorus or it will remove nitrogen Where, where's it going to what's it what's it removing to? so the so the phosphorus biologically will be actually removed in the sludge it will be the bacteria that grow in okay, that. Okay, so the bacteria is going to take care of the nitrogen. Yeah, for phosphorus. Oh, just phosphorus. Yeah, yeah, just phosphorus. For nitrogen, Mike already converts the biological nitrogen to uh, the ammonia to nitrates. And an unaerated tank, when you recycle those nitrates, will use that source as a source of oxygen. And so we'll actually remove the nitrogen as a gas. So the phosphorus comes out in the sludge, the nitrogen eventually will come out of the process um, as a nitrogen gas. Right, right, okay. So, it's all biological anyway, yeah. It's all, it's all about yeah. manipulating the, chemi the biological activity in each tank. Each mm -hmm. tank is gonna... Different enzymes. Bugs are gonna do a different job right. in each tank and it's our job to manipulate it, like you said, either with no air, with air, uh, and so that's the whole reason why we have to build different zones in jay's picture you see these big open tanks yeah when the tannery was here you just added air we need to build tanks inside those tanks with different uh, mechanisms to create different environments because it's a lot the limit is a lot harder to meet now especially with this total nitrogen it's uh it's definitely meetable and it's it's all about money it's all about putting these tanks in yeah in, in one critical um component i didn't mention but mike would correct me, is we still need to add chemicals. Um, call it belts and suspenders, but also we have a low TSS effluent limit, and without chemicals or another process like filtration, um, you wouldn't get the low TSS number. So this five-stage Barden foam will also um, include in it chemical addition to remove <coughs> phosphorus and mostly to remove the TSS. So that's another. Berwick has a very strict limit. We're very stringent compared to most treatment plants. Because so we're up against, because of the river, it's always based on what you're discharging into. Yeah, yeah. And compared to a lot of treatment plants in Southern Maine, we have tight, tight limits. And we do a good job to get there now. Part of that came from Prime. And uh, yeah, we got rid of, we got rid of the common sense ones, some of them, not many. But um, yeah, the, the tight limits are, are difficult and being on this river doesn't help a lot of places not many places have to chlorinate or disinfect but because of clam flats clam flats down the river we have to do it year round and uh anyway that that's uh that's part of the permit and now if uh dep does come back with a permit and they say hey you have to take out remove so much nitrogen it gives us a limit i mean it's not an overnight thing you know it might be a process of five years we expect it, no, really don't think it's going to be long now. Um, you know, so you have time to build and, and prove what you're going to do, but, you know, we're just trying to be get ahead and be ready. Um, that equity buy-in fee, when the board first adopted it, the old fee uh, 
had no basis and and so we asked these guys to come up with a fee that had a had a legitimate basis that other people used and and that was it and uh, at the time I think we adopted the lower rate we didn't have this this the site of what we where we really needed to go in front of us you know which you know, when Steve brought us to that um, 290 it uh, opened our eyes a little bit there so um, anyway that's kind of a Thing we wanted to get to, I guess. Yeah, there also was an item on permit. And, uh, yes. The permitting process. <coughs> you mentioned four. It's five every five. Five years. years? Yeah, that was the cycle. And twenty years is well, twenty two thousand and three to now is twenty years. Twenty, 20 years. Yeah. And that's that's a pretty long time. I I only know of one other permit. That was the Pierce Island permit that oh, yeah. was twenty years old yeah. and not renewed. And it's pretty. It's the nitrogen that held it up. The New Hampshire they were working with the e, EPA with New Hampshire to get it going, and Maine just said we're going to step aside because Maine's a delegated state. They do their own. Uh, they write their own permits. Obviously, they got to go through the EPA. But that's what the holdup was. Maine didn't quite agree with what they were doing over there, so they basically said, "Let's them, let them fight it out and see what's going to happen." And that's what they did. Now New Hampshire has their permits in place. We got left with the leftovers because we obviously have to do whatever the EPA says at the end of the day. And so now Maine's going, "Okay, we got to divvy out what they're giving us." And that's where, and it, that's the beauty is though, we work good with the DEP. That, like I said, we can see what's coming. So and that's what we're doing. We're trying to plan so. We're not caught down the road with no funds available at all. We're trying to make sure we we have this stuff lined what up. What happens if we don't have any funds? Do, what would they say to you? <coughs> would they lend you the money or? Steve might be able to. That's how you go pound rocks. Well, you get yeah. done. I mean, you have a license in your permit, and you have to meet that permit. If you get a new permit and you have new limits and you fail to meet those, after a certain time period, they'll do either a consent decree or an administrative order. And, you know, they're dragging along enough. So they don't step up with any money. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, it, it, it's a, every year you never know. Sometimes there's um, money because of, like Jay said, the, pro, the 2020, yeah. um, ARPA 2020 and the infrastructure programs. So the money has become available year to year. Yeah, they don't. They don't say upgrade here some money. Well, if the if it's real important because we're discharging into the river, that would bring us up into a higher priority to maybe get some money. It, it does. In fact, the rating system reflects that. If you're under an order to meet a new permit limit, yeah. you get a higher rating, and it makes it uh, more eligible for money. Low low uh, low interest loans and forgive loan forgiveness. Yeah. Have you guys started looking at the infrastructure money? Is, is there anything there for you? Or? Well, the district yeah. is on the list. Yeah. And so, you know, they have to do the application, but um, I'm not sure about the uh, amount of loan forgiveness that they talk about. You've got to get the application in. The, yeah. I, I, have you been in contact with uh, congressional people and stuff like that? Uh, generally, USDA and uh, DEP. Yeah. For the stimulus funds, cool. and uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know because I know we, the town before was dealing directly with Susan Collins' office, yeah, you no, know, directly. And uh, I can't remember who Steve was working with, Alex, and Alex, and uh, and she was making sure we got a lot of money for the downtown projects, yeah, you know. So, as uh, we should all start bugging our congressional people, it's because the money's there, yeah, you know, is we just have to make sure that they know we want it. Right, so right. If we don't say anything, it's not going to come our way. So yeah. yeah. More importantly, it's going to be used. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not yeah. not just going to put it in the bank and find a project. We have a project with a plan. I think, especially if you tie it to without the upgrades, it can inhibit the density and growth of their downtown. It's an extremely marketable project, mm -hmm. and you just put it right there. Just say, yeah, our downtown will have a hard time growing and sustaining it if we well, right we would have limitations on what we could allow being built down there yeah. without being able to do these upgrades that steve's talking about yeah because dealing dealing with susan collins office we've got what 10 million dollars for the downtown yeah. projects yeah. so there's uh yeah start calling and what's the source 
Uh, that, was through, that was through APA infrastructure. Yeah, earmarks. Earmarks is, yeah. Now, like I said, we just started bugging them. The town uh, received um, $247,000 of loan forgiveness to the SRF program for the water upgrades. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, the SRF, they have lots of funding available, more than they can actually give out, and that's usually why in water and wastewater, Steve kind of turns towards that direction. Uh, they're usually the go-to, but there may be other sources. So oh, they're right. We just have to bug them. Well, that's so that's what he was saying. And simply, we have 1.1 right. million. We were eligible to discharge. We have this massive treatment plant that right. Prime gave us, which is that's gold because you don't have to put those tanks in the ground. We discharge around 200 thousand a day because we only have a third of that system online. Jesus. And we got a little bit of room for growth right now, but if we really want to build up like everyone wants downtown, that's where Steve's comes into play and we need to get another train. The other problem is, as you know, if you have one car and that car breaks down, how are you getting to work? So you need, you need redundancy too. So at the end of the day, this, mm -hmm. this second train has to happen. And like Jay said, it's not happening today, it's not happening tomorrow, but if we could plan this three, four, five years out, and do it right and not put it all burden on the people like that real hard that's what we're planning that's what we've tried to do that's what this list shows what we've done i mean we've rebuilt the plant without hammering people the uh in its different responsibilities you know a new permit which gives us new limits that's really everybody's responsibility to pay for you know everybody that's already here but if it's you know the, you can almost split it i guess but the the creation of more capacity that's for somebody coming in i mean that's basically like funds from that fee we were talking about get set aside and you have to spend them within 10 years towards capital projects that qualify so um i want to get some clarity yeah. on the on the fee structure because i'm not sure i fully understand it sure um right now there is an annual resident fee of 600 dollars mm mm-hmm so that's a resident on the on the sewer system. That's a user fee, yeah. Yeah, pays six hundred dollars over the year mm -hmm. for their for their sewer system. It's not metered or anything like that. It's a flat it's rate flat per rate, yeah. per house per yeah. per unit. So we don't use water. The water per residents, no. Oh, I no, we've always been flat rate. We looked at the. We uh, talked about it in past years about uh, tying it in with the water system yeah. and stuff. But. When uh, yeah, Lisa was here, we we hired uh, main rural water, and then we did a. A study and came up with a couple of options as far as rate uh, rates and who gets charged and all that sort of thing. We're able to tie together through map and lot each of our our uh, databases, which was interesting. And then you figured out well who's got water and not sewer and vice versa and all that sort of thing. But by the time we got all all done um, and put it all together, at the time it it wasn't of interest to the trustees or just it didn't seem it, didn't make sense. it wasn't worth the work. To there, go there's, through to, there's in order to do it. disadvantages too, because if everyone starts tightening up their water, well, that's bad for the sewer system because you need water to flush the mm. system. Second of all, at the end of the day, just like you guys, we get a budget that we have to survive on, and if let's say it's a million dollars, and everyone tightens it up and it goes down to five hundred thousand, the next year we have to adjust our prices, jack it up, and, it, and now they're really mad because they just redid their houses, but we're going to jack the price up because at the end of the day we still need to pay for our budget. So there's advantages and disadvantages. And so the more flow you can get in here at the present time would be better. Well, you need flow be more to flush your system and stuff because that's another problem. If you start getting systems dry, that are dry, they cause odors, they leave stuff behind in your lines, plug them up. Uh, they're just, we get where people say, oh, base it on flow, but there's benefits to doing it the way we do it too because it's a, at the end of the day, we know what our budget is. It's done. We get what we need to fund the budget. Uh, so there's definitely hits and misses on both ends of it. There's is it, it, is it even up, Jay? Hmm? In other words, if, if we look at the water the town's using a day, is, it, is, is that more or less is the same as the water that's coming through the plant? The, the, yeah, for the most part, we do have we do, we, we do have I and I infiltration. Or you know illegal sump pump set that kicked that up, or maybe a leaky manhole. We've inspected all the manholes. If we see, you know, when we find any yeah. that are in a ditch or 
subject to taking on. Yeah. So we try to eliminate that. But, so it's uh, not too bad then. I mean, it's pretty close. No, it's not a huge difference. And and right now, I mean, it was a it was a big concern when we had Prime here because we actually ended up paying them a bunch of money trying to buy capacity back, which it didn't make sense to us that how do they own the capacity? But we were so close to our permit limit for volume, and especially when we had huge storms with Prime and the extra water coming down the system, which a lot of it was from Prime because they actually had roof drains and everything hooked up to the system. Yeah, well, that's the way we, we do a house in Dover that's yeah. the old the house. We have to get a check with the city because the ground the drains from the roof yeah. are piped right into the sewer, and yeah. you got to block them up. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Block them up. But, uh, yeah, long story short, I mean, it's not a huge issue with, for us uh, now. So that's the annual residential fee. What yep. and so what is how's that different from the three sixty eight current that's gonna be yep. thirteen ninety? Basically what this with the uh, original yeah, I added onto a chart that we had already done or <laughs> Jessica did here. This is all information from uh, Maine Rural Water and I just tried to pick the towns that in southern Maine. Yeah. And that that residential fee in the third column is what it costs to hook up a residence Okay. To the system. That's the connection fee. Yeah, on the okay. back. Um, that was when we uh, changed how much that fee was. If you look at the page after. Yeah. That, I mean, that's where it still puts us. We're still quite. So quite somebody low. builds somebody builds a new money. house on no, the system. The, the starting yeah, January first, right the, the cost to connect that to down. the sewer system is going to be thirteen ninety. Yeah, that's okay. the fee. Yeah. And then whoever lives in that house is going to pay six hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Okay. That makes all sense. That that thing you clarified that. My other question is, how are um, businesses being um, uh, being uh, being charged because they're not yeah. residential houses; they're mm -hmm. they're businesses. Some use more water, some <coughs> use less. Yeah. yeah. What we what we did a couple of years ago is we adopted a, a a larger sheet than we had. Our, what our one rate system was much smaller for quite a long time. But anticipating what might come with downtown and everything, yeah, we adopted a larger sheet that's based on um, um, main engineering standards. Like if you build something that needs to be put on a septic system, they have standards that have been adopt, uh, yeah, yeah. adopted over years that say, well, for this business, you get to charge this much, you know, there's a, this many gallons coming out of it, or this sort of use, there's that many gallons coming out of it. So we basically, um, yeah, developed that assignment sheet for units, for household, household units, according to that. Now, right now, you know, we've used it a little bit. There's some reason, some things that, um, I think we're going to work on, and basically from my last meeting, one of my projects right now is to come up with better policies as far as that, applying those, mm -hmm. you know, how, how to use them. We tried to make it broader so that it applied, applied to all sorts of different businesses, which is fine, but you still, when it comes to commercial units, the sheet still says at the bottom that you need to come and talk to the district, you know, because everybody is just a little bit different. Yeah. And it depends on if you're, uh, what they're, Discharging may be heavier, more solids like beer waste or, you know, yeah. or just residential. Well, I mean, we have a brewery and a, and a butcher shop, and they clearly they are going to use different le levels of water, but if they're in the same size unit, are they going to pay the same, you know? And so it's, it's um, you know, part of, uh, part of why we wanted to have this meeting is to, because, one, we've never had this meeting. It's never, it's never happened as long as I've been on the board. Um, so... We want to get a better understanding of what's going on in the sewer district. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, we have this big downtown project. We're trying to get a lot of new businesses downtown so that we can, you know, expand Berwick in a, in a positive way. Not just one giant business that when they leave, they take 65% of the capacity. Um, but we just want to understand how, you know, we can make sure that these new businesses are going to be charged and make sure if there's any, mm -hmm. you know, if there's an old system, we need to get a new system, whatever the system might be. Just make sure it's fair to everybody that's coming into town so that, you know, we don't create any bad blood. Right. We want we want people to come. We want them to stay. We want them to be long-term businesses in town. Understood. I mean, our intent is only to be fair. Um, I know the board and all I've worked with them has been very pro Business is supportive of, <laughs> of anybody coming to town. We all no, want no. to see it. We, you know, when we, uh, I tell you, we're, from where I started, the year I started here, and we lost Prime, and 65, 70% of the income, for years they were 80, 
we've been waiting for this day. <laughs> you know, it's like just to get the use, to get the volume back up in the system. And so it, it's a, for us, it's a happy day. But of course, we have challenges as well. So the, the go back and talk about the fee structure here. The residential fee, you know, was the the hookup for the residential. Um, is that the same for a multifamily home? Yeah, well, residents, that's it's always been treated as a, a single residence. It's just, yeah, it's so, just that. So uh, a duplex will be a single connection fee? Du duplex would be two. It's we, equivalent, it's the EDU. It's an equivalent to a user. And so if it's three unit apartment, that's three. If it's four units, it's four. So the, you, you charge four three hookup. connection fees, three yeah. four connection fees? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Depending for each, each dwelling unit, yep, yeah. 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 yep. Yeah. Everybody, that, that's uh, I mean, that's why they show it as the in, in residential fees because for every every residence or equivalent unit. So it's a connection fee, but how many sewer lines are coming out of that building? Just one? Could be just one, yeah. But it's yeah. still a multiple connection fee. It, I mean, uh, even a four inch or six inch pipe can carry a tremendous right. amount right. of volume. It's right. just, it's a matter of what we get down here that we have to take care of. I can understand the, the, the annual fee and all that, but mm -hmm. it just seems to me that, you know, a connection fee, you know, maybe it's, it's um, uh, we'll call it the equity buy-in fee, I mm -hmm. guess, instead of a connection fee. You know, if you're making one connection for one house or one connection for four Residents, right. it's still just one connection, but it's EDU. Yeah, but you got it's four different, four different houses pumping, sh right? It's not, down. it's not the physical connection yeah. that the charge is based on, it's based on it's the, based on so the it's flow not, and the load, the bathroom, the number really, of units. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's the amount of loading that's going into yeah. the line. Yeah. So, one unit, one house has you know, so, one unit so, has less loading so coming to the plant does a, than does a, four, five, and so on. Yeah. So, does a a single bedroom have a separate one, a separate Yeah, piece? separate charge, yeah. If From it's a one a bedroom, bedroom apartment, bedroom? yeah. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you go through um, any studies or in industry records like this, yeah. I mean, if you look through the whole <coughs> thing, yeah, I don't think there's anybody that, that recognizes a single unit. Nobody, uh, I think they're generally all two units and up. You know, as far as for a connection. Or, so um, the, the equity buy-in fee is going up on January 1st, mm -hmm. but, but the annual the annual fee that customers are currently paying, that's not changing. That's as their sewer right bill. Now. That's their sewer bill every year. That's yeah. the annual sewer bill. Yeah. That, that one is, uh, the board just decided we're going to, for this year's budget, we started when, in uh, 2017. The intent was to do small increments regularly whether even annually, as opposed to doing what we had done in the past, we'd go for five, six years and end up being 50, 60, $70 increase. And so you're looking at this year, a 3% okay. just to keep up. I mean, chemical costs, polymers, everything we're dealing with. Uh, do you do you guys have to go through the PUC for rate increases? No, ma'am, no, no. Uh, for us, it's a process of public hearing. Uh, How many uses? Right now, it was eighteen hundred and something? Fourteen, I think. Fourteen or five or something like that. Yeah, it's around fourteen equivalent units. No, uh, I thought that was the EDU. No. It says number of equivalent units is eighteen forty-two. Yeah, Where yeah, yeah. So we have basically. I think we built. Where are you seeing that? On the uh, this page. Yeah, but those units may not be uh, accurate to the representation of like the home. Yeah. So, you know, those units could be you know, 100 units in one building. Yeah. So, we, we, but Mike, the way you look at it, or like a laundromat may be assigned six units, yeah. even though it's one business. Yeah. And we charge, based at last, the last time we built this quarter, it was, Mike was right, it's around 1,400 units that's charged for. See, like a restaurant might be four or whatever, in the multiples. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a lot of commercial Steve, ones. Is this an estimated build out though, the eighteen hundred? No, nope, that's current. So maybe to explain it a different way, different angle. There's only about fourteen hundred bills that go out. Yeah. And in those bills, 
Some of them were multiple dwelling units yes. assessed. Yes. That, so they're ending like, up with eighteen hundred and forty-two. So maybe the better statement is there's about fourteen hundred connections yep. and eighteen hundred yeah. units that are being charged what, for equivalent dwelling units. Yeah. 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 Okay. How do you have four, 1,400? There's like a 1,000 water accounts. How do you have 400 more? I just a guess. Estimate? No, this is the actual bills that go out. You have 1,400 bills that go out? Keep track of. Yeah, and well, no we know how many water uses, James? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd, have to, water. I'd have to look that up, you know, because we, when we did that study, we had it figured out who had water and, right, you right, know, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. I, I'm it's sure there's, close, there's thought, places like. where it doesn't overlap. I'm sure there's, uh, the way the systems were built out, I, I don't, I'm sure they were not built, you know, layered on top yeah. of each other perfectly. Yeah, like uh, when they put the trunk up Pine Hill, old Pine Hill, it's probably a lot, a lot of those residences were, that were made the connector start paying their fee yeah. but they're on well water yeah had well way i had well water besides yeah, you know, yeah. so i but, i don't know James how it might be right maybe there are 1100 bills and 1842 equivalent dwelling units yeah that 1100 sounds about right to me too when i looked at the billing records but we hadn't looked at the billing records in quite a long time yeah who does the billing for the sewer department we do here you, you, I mean, the, like, does the board handle it, or is it just the... Uh, uh, well, office staff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not something yeah. that's, like, outsourced or anything. No, we haven't. Uh, <coughs> basically, is someone has to be here <coughs> to take care of all our other billing and payments and... Good customer support. Yes, yes, that's true. Customer... Co got people calling in, complaining about the bill. Although, since COVID, they really like having that box out front, so they don't have to have... You know, sometimes you get people come up to the window and like to talk for a long time, so yeah. it kind of helps make their day oh, go you, better. People like to talk in the town of Berwick? That's <laughs> strange. We, we just, uh, the town was also help we, uh, with establishing, uh, yeah, online pay, which yep. we never had, so we did that earlier this year, and uh, quite popular. So, so is there a time frame that you want to get all this done, that we kind of got it planned out to get all it to do all this right? Uh, not really. We're in the process of, first of all, we don't even know where the permit's going to be yet. Probably mm -hmm. by next year we're going to know where it is, and Steve's basically got to build this based on what our actual permit is. And like we said, we ain't had a permit in 20-something years. So, Who I think that DEP? The, the main DEP will do it and then get approval from the EPA. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure Steve, like what Steve said is what's going to probably happen. There's going to be a total nitrogen limit phosphorus might get removed but even if it does we still got to probably add a chemical which will remove phosphorus but also polish the effluent because we have such a strict limit so i mean we have a feeling for what's going to come down the line i think steve is right on top of it uh yeah. but we still are in a holding pattern to see where we're going to be before you can design it yep. yeah yep. we're right. we keep, keeping right. ourselves in line for the uh, srf funds as well as i've been talking to mm -hmm. my contact the USDA we'll have to get Mike's take up on Mike's uh, advice and see if we can pressure anybody else so what was the justification for the equity buy-in fee going up over a thousand dollars yeah and that as we explained uh, when the board adopted that fee mostly it was approved by our attorney it was something that was regularly used um, but it was based on our permitted there's a couple of variables that go into the equation. Our permitted flow, which is right. 1.1 million. What Steve's study really brought brought home to us is that no, you really your capacity is only 290,000 gallons, and so that's the number we entered into the equation that caused caused that. Which and is right. I mean, we have we we do need to look at we are in preparing for making a change for increasing capacity as well as looking at being ready to to adapt to a new license, a new permit. And these are and that fee is only charged once when a once. building is built. When, yeah. a, when a, but building is built and connected to the system, you know. And you just pay the yearly fee. And then yeah. Yeah, yeah then it's just the user paid. fee. Yeah. Yeah. I think the challenge I see with the system is the, how you determine the equivalent dwelling unit. It's yeah. Kind of where I see some of the flaws in the system because there are so many different variations of the of the same use. Yeah. And it reminds me of like. In zoning, we have uh, parking tables for, you know, based on the use, there's 30 different enumerated uses, 
and you have a specified designated amount of parking spaces, the system doesn't work for planning. It's, mm -hmm. it's an, and I, I, I think we were looking, I met with Jay a couple weeks ago, we were looking at Kenny Bunk or something, it was a more simplified process. And what I'd like to see, I think some of the feedback I've heard, I've heard some, some grumbling from a few different folks, and it's just, they don't, and maybe we can work on a local permitting process. I would just like to see for them to be able to project what type of fee that they're going to mm -hmm. they're facing. For them to be able to look at the fee schedule on their website and go, before they, you know, they're waiting for CO or the already got certificate of occupancy. <laughs> now it is on the website. So the 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 user uh, EDU schedule is on there. Yeah, if that you're prediction opening, chart. If you're opening a laundromat, you can go in and see how many EDU units are. If you're opening a gym, I think it's by 10 people, correct? My car is at 30. So yeah, the questions are going to go in <laughs> bathrooms, locker rooms, the more Shower. water you use, showers. It's so you, you can look at that and you can look at how many potential people you're going to have in the gym. I think it goes by 30 for a gym. Is that how you get it down here? The correct. new gym downtown here? So who did that? Who decided that? How to build that? Uh, and talk to them and yeah, no, we did, and and uh, as in any commercial one, that's what I'm finding is uh, mm -hmm. you still end up being you have a framework to look at it initially, and uh, this is what I'm finding in in all the information I'm trying to gather about policies. I mean, this it's a good framework to start with, but uh, you know, um, I think what we're going to work on is is fine tuning, you, you know, make it simpler. He mentioned uh, K Kenny Bunkport. There's just rate sheet and they're a, they're a flat rate system and uh, it's a lot simpler but when I look at theirs is like well how do they accommodate this or why do they charge that I mean it's limited it doesn't so I'm, I'm curious in how they do go to a business that's not on there you know um, anyway that's just that stuff we're working on I, you know we want to make it all work for everybody and the biggest thing is they need to come down and talk to Jay and sit yeah. down a lot of times they get on here they don't understand it and then they make it they make it be what they want it to be, and then they get upset when it's not reality. So if you get on there and you're not, it's not clear. I believe it says to come down here and speak with the sewer district. Yeah. Jay can sit down and easily walk them through it if it's not clear, like he was saying. Everything is based on if it's a gym, so so many people, every ten people or fifty, whatever it is. Same with the restaurant. It's based on how many seats. It's and I can see how it's unclear to someone that's not used to the wastewater stuff. You they can call and come down. But the so the fee schedule for a gym is, is for every ten registered gym goers. So whether that's a key card gym or Planet Fitness, the actual water usage is going to vary. Like it's not. Well, like I said, if if the if they also, talk about changing the system, but the system is in place and it's pretty clear. Whether or not the system has to be revamped is one thing. There is a system in place. It's clear. If they come down and talk to it, there's not a surprise. We're not trying to surprise people. No, can you, no, no, I get that. Can you, maybe I'm being naive, but can you um, show me on a website where it's actually on here? Because everything I keep finding says, please come down. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, so, so if we're talking about transparency, it's there. It's not. If you're looking from the outside, looking in, you know, Hey, I want to build a business in Berwick. I want to go to Summersworth. Well, yeah. Summersworth has a, a flat fee here. Oh, Berwick's going to tell me to call. Wow. <laughs> you know. What is Summersworth? <laughs> uh, Are they flat fee? I'm not sure. No. And I'm not, yeah. saying, it, I'm not saying it is. I'm just, you know, I, looking I at it from that point to say, oh. 700 and <laughs> some were used. And then we just said, oh, it's be. there. And it's not. Yeah. I've got, I've got it. I'm going to just one flat fee. <laughs> they're just doing one flat fee a year then. They're not building by... Uh, it might be by the quarter. I don't. I don't know. But uh, by the water usage, no. <laughs> they may go by water usage. Water yeah. bill, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess yeah. my I guess my suggestion would just be just put it on the website. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go to the website, but it's supposed to be on there. Yeah, it's it, it's got the click here, and then it goes back to contact us. It's, and to, your, and to your point, to, and to your point, this is the where your uh, website is a. Work in progress. No, no, really and no, and I get that. I think that's just time. ours is too. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, correct. Our the, the town website has its own. <laughs> Thank you. I just think then you could say like, really, it's no. You, you looked at that before you <laughs> before you came to us. So I just want to ask one question. The um, 
So uh, the the equity buy-in fee. So we have you know Great Falls doing their. How many units are they building out over there? Two hundred and sixty. Two hundred and sixty. So they are they are going to pay two sixty times the thirteen ninety, or are they paying the previous fee because that's when they are planning? No, they pay the, they pay the whatever the fee is at the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean it, the. Uh, uh, like the original building we already started the uh, the rebuild yeah you know that one there we already started assessing units and so basically my agreement with them is that I apply that the older rate because they already made that connection you know, I, I yep. go by the time they connect to our collector system okay you know because that's when that money is due is when you to get that permit to tie to our system got it so uh, that's so that gets paid right up front yeah, in, it, in their building, the only thing is we don't know. We only knew what was going into three units, and so we charged like a readiness to serve for the other ones that aren't occupied yet, uh, or one, one EDU, one uh, as one unit, and then when somebody moves in there, we're going to have to assign however many units for their regular. Depending on the business. So it's basically on, like a thousand bucks a month, when it comes down to. I mean, a hundred bucks a month. Yeah. For the for the, if you're going to take the fee and bill it monthly. Right? Yeah, I mean, Basically but it is. Four hundred dollars a month, well, a year. Well, that's a one-time no, fee. One You're not time paying fee. that. That's, that's just that's that's just once. This yeah. is this, is, that's this just is, is a one-time fee. Yeah. These are just annual it, fees. That's a one-time fee. Aren't we going up on this though? Yeah. To six twenty. That's it. Yeah. Yes, that, didn't, that didn't look like it was much at all. That and, and, that, and that's billed quarterly. So the 600 that's going up to 620, we I build don't that. Think that's, I mean, my porta joints are 100 bucks a month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You're not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's bad. Yeah, I don't think there's any. We try yeah, but no, 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 there's no issues with with just to clean the this. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the problem is right now that everyone's discussing. And that's what we're trying to explain how it's laid yeah, out. I don't, I don't see a problem with that. Uh, yeah, and it just to. It was a, New Hampshire has a great site for wastewater. No, I don't the think average with it. I think the it's average uh, wastewater bill for a, a residence is seven hundred and twelve, and the average the connection fee well below. throughout the whole state is a little over two thousand. <laughs> like shout that out. A little over two thousand. Yeah, <laughs> to, to connect the unit. Yeah. I mean, if you, could you know, some of them are some some are really high. <laughs> I mean, they've got it listed by all towns here too, but because you're right, when you look at the rates and you look comparatively, it's it's well below yeah. the surrounding areas. The other, so the other piece is, so no matter how big of a single family house, it's charged, like a studio one bedroom is charged the same as a <coughs> five bedroom. The resident, yep. So what's the... That, that's common in a lot of places. Um, some, you know, you'll find if you look at uh, the industry report made with main rule water, some will charge by fixture, some charge by yeah, number of bedrooms, some charge by, you know, there's all different types of ways it's done. I think no, that the single the family, the multifamily stuff, that makes perfect sense to me. The, uh, the, the commercial stuff is what's tricky. Yeah, the commercial stuff is where it gets tricky. Like for, uh, for instance, just the health club, the, the gym idea, it's per ten members. Yeah. So, like, do they have to report how many members they have to the to to the sewer district, or do you? Yeah, it's kind of like a. Yeah. We can check, but you know. The planning board submittal is what sets the process in yeah. okay. an application where yep. they estimate their flows. Gotcha. And they would estimate the number of seats in a restaurant, the number yep. of. You get occupancy. They would, never, they would never estimate how many members they're going to have over the life of their. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. A, it's at the, the planning board level where they say, we're building a health club for 300 members. You know? I would think they would know that. You know, the, by the amount of space and the amount of equipment in a gym, what you would have for the capacity of what you could have for people. Because if you have a too small of a gym and you have a thousand people, but that gym, then you have to wait for machines, then people aren't going to that gym, right? Yeah, I just ask for clarification. When we talk members in that case, we're just looking at capacity it estimate is what. No, I, yeah. I think I that to, off of there. build off of what Steve's saying is, yeah. is you're getting the capacity like. So, Bovair opens a gym. He thinks in his head, for this size gym and these, this many machines are, are free weights that I have, I can put 25 people an hour in there. Yeah. And 24 hours, that's how I would think in, you know, to make it simplified, how he's going to estimate it. Now, that doesn't mean that that's reality. 
Yeah. It's, no, it's no, that makes it's sense. Yeah. But we're not going to go. You know, what are we what, <laughs> walking at nine o'clock on a Sunday? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Your, uh, your, your, your members. I mean, well, it's, it's more of an estimate built off of what the planning board creates okay. when they issue the permits. See, it, it, and I. The, the other side of that is also you have something like the beauty salon where it's five chairs. I mean, that's as, fu- as fine as far as it goes, except if you have a beauty salon that can fit, a, you know, a person wants to maximize, they're turning a building into a beauty salon, they can fit six chairs. Now they pay two, two, uh, two equivalent units because they're over the limit. No, you that's, know. that's also something they can come down to the district and, and say Talk to Jay, about. hey, can we pay a quarter unit? Can we pay a half unit? Yep. Yeah. There's flexibility, you, you know, like you go on the website, and Mike, you looked at the website and he said, you know, talk to the district. So, you know, um, uh, Corner Point Brewing yeah. has been in long talks with, with Jay about his flows and the amount of... Um, is the, is the, does he have anything different that comes out in his flow that affects... It, we, ch- we charge the... the Manufacturing flow separately. Okay. We we go by gallons. You know the gallons that he mm-hmm. used. We determine early on what what uh, the yeah nature of his beer waste was, and that it takes him three hundred and forty five gallon whatever. How so many gallons per batch? And so at the end of the quarter, I'll get I'll get the report of how many batches he brewed. And but does so it, it does it affect how you treat it when, when it comes into with the stuff the regular wholesale stuff? Does the brewery it's well, I mean, it, every, every different waste will affect it. Um, they're, yeah, they're a little bit stronger than a domestic house, so yeah, it costs more to treat them. That's why Jay has come up with a price, and he does it per batch, and that yeah. so many gallons. So I mean, yep. we've I it, feel like we've done it pretty fast. Yeah, you can't there. compare gallons of water because it carries so much more weight, so much more organic. Yeah, that's that, it, it, and that's the same with everybody. You equate that to uh, equivalent dwelling units, so we know what comes in a average yeah. household waste yeah. that comes out of the pipe so you can equate a commercial user depending on what they're discharging you can always equate it back to that that one standard and so there is there does. is room for give and take if someone is just over or around a limit or if they have a special we, oh, yeah. we yeah. i mean we did with the original exercise place as well as in and with corner point i mean we okay. made concessions you know where he doesn't have showers you know it's a, you know it's, so you don't have that use and we're not trying to run anybody out of business, no, but no, no. we want we want and, to get fair and, share. And you know? I don't think that one hundred and fifty dollars a quarter is going to run anybody out of business. <laughs> that's not. That's just you know, just making sure that you know it, it's the system is equitable and everybody everybody can can understand it and just get a fair. Yeah. It, it, if it's you know as simple as coming down here and talking to whoever's here at the time and just you know getting a fair shake at it, then you know. That's part it, of what being in business is about. Sometimes, you know, you got to go and wheel and deal. And through the structure of our charter um, and rules and regs, if anybody is ever unhappy with I, what I decide, what I give, they appeal to the board. They always can appeal to the board. And is there any fluff in there in the, in the, in the rate, yearly rate? In other words, is it? do you have any money left over that's going to go into a, an account that you can use to pay down some debt or... <laughs> we, well, that's what Jay kind of opened up with that yeah. statement I did. when the uh, accountant said to reinvest your money rate right back right. into what we have because yeah. we didn't have enough right now. We don't you know, have enough to do it. We, it we, we, we don't have a lot. We, we, is this going to give you more? Will it give more? Yeah. I mean, we still, we'll have more stuff to treat. Um, this will allow us to... Put the equipment in to treat the extra flow. Yeah. That's the whole point so of this pay equity buy in. So it'll yeah. pay for it. Okay. Yeah, it's supposed to yeah. help pay for it. I mean, it yeah. doesn't finance it all. It doesn't finance you. Mark, the, the <laughs> money we're reinvesting is not a, I wouldn't say it's, a, it's, it's really, it's just we're Maintenance. putting it right back in the capital yeah. improvements. Right. Like but the building, the off building next door needs a new roof soon. I don't think it's that's a, new, a lot of money a, a year. Those no. type of examples. If, you know, if you went up to 800 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Do well, people I mean, actually come down here and bitch about that? Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we did it on the spectrum of other towns in southern Maine. You know, we fall well, in the middle of the pack for the regular yeah. bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Taxes going tank. up. Come on. <laughs> we came to the septic tank pumps. They complain about everything. 350 bucks, right? I don't know. Well, I don't I do for mine. I think the septic guy is like every three years, it's about $350. Every few years, it's like it's supposed to be like every five years. It's easier to pay for clean water. You can say, "Oh yeah, I want to buy my water," but when you pay for the 
Dirty yeah. stuff too is like. Yeah. Um, you know the one thing I want to point out, and I can't I can't say uh, compliment Mike enough. I mean, Steve will attest to it. We uh, we did a project where we we installed a couple of machines. The board knows, and uh, what our guys have done on their own for some of the projects has been amazing. And that that one, even the engineer said, "Yeah, that probably saved over a hundred thousand dollars by not involving an engineer and so much and uh, bidding it out." And uh, they've done some fantastic stuff, and that has saved us a ton of money as well. Um, yeah, I just had to give him his kudos. Yeah, we do, you know, the, the staff here, Mike, they GC the projects themselves. So if there's not a GC involved, so that probably takes 20% out of it, if not more out of a price. Mm -hmm. There's self-performing work that, you know, uh, can be done with uh, the equipment we have and the skill sets, whether it's running conduit, whether it's installing pumps, and then to get to, like, say, the hooking up to the skate and the wiring part of it, that's when we bring in our electricians who are contracted through the project anyway. So the, the stuff that you guys bring in, you know, you've been doing that for what, five years now about? Since 17, and that's yeah. where you'll see yeah. a lot of these big capital improvements were allowed right. to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Is how much how much you guys bring in now? We're about 5 million gallons this year. We've slowly ramped it up progressively because right. we didn't yeah, have the equipment. System, right. to, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we, we built it up. And, uh, yeah. we're doing really, and every year we've gotten more efficient with our treatment and our chemicals, our power. So it's kind of... You're bringing in more income and spending a little bit less to treat right, it, so it's right. been been pretty amazing to get to where we're at. Right five, now. five million gallons a year of special waste like septage and holding. Treat, and yeah, they truck it in. Yeah, mm -hmm. jeez, that's a lot. Huh? The uh, and the the way it has turned out, which was surprising, and one of the things Steve found out when he started looking at what are our options. Um, is that it's actually beneficial to our process. <coughs> so that one train that we have, right. um, you know, we used to take sludge or septic in and let it flow in through the system and you get shock loads and you know it upset it but now Mike adds it to a tank and basically homogenizes it, aerates it for some time so that we have a consistent product that's coming out of that tank and put it to the process every hour every day it keeps the bugs alive it keeps the, the operation optimal it, it really it's worked out to our benefit hugely so your sludge pile, something we used to talk about a long time ago. <laughs> it is, uh, you ever find anything about installing solar on that? I know it's possible, time, yeah. They, they talked about letting you guys float the things on top and stuff, the, yeah. the stands and stuff. Is, yeah. We're uh, going to have to go back at it. We had signed up for the main power options and tried yeah. to get into a project that CMP, I think, put too many uh, hurdles in the way and expense. And I just got a letter this week. These guys haven't seen that they have totally scrapped the project. If it had gone through with the way it was planned, we'd have made out fabulous. I mean, the way they had the prices work, but uh, right. yeah, it got, it got nixed. So now probably we'll be back looking at but the, the pile. People that don't know, why do you explain it? The, the sludge pile left over from the tannery out mm -hmm. back, they can't get rid of, right? Is, yeah. Uh, it's there forever. Well, it was either, that was at the time, was do we truck it away? Or I think it was Frank Underwood's idea, let's cap it where it sits. Right. And, uh, they did that, and for years we had to provide testing on groundwater and all the monitoring wells all around uh, to third party. Then we were doing it for ourselves for a while, and eventually, it, it probably six years ago now, the the DB came back and said nothing has moved, nothing's changed, there's no migration. So pull the wells out of the ground and make sure you mow it once yep. a year. So you can, so you could you can probably put something on there. Yeah, because of the cover though, you have to have they make pedestals that that sit yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, in fact, when I first asked about that, maybe 2010, I went to right. DEP said, hey, can we do that? And he said, no, no. way, yeah, no yeah, way. But then I will say, yeah, Frank sent me a paper that said, hey, up in South Portland or somewhere, they put it on the landfill. I said, what? So I called the same office, and the guy said, yeah. You know, I said, well, how come this guy told me I couldn't do it? You're doing it here. He said, well, that was this guy. He's gone now. He said, I like that. You can do it. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, the Outlook just put in a, a decent-sized solar farm. Oh, really? Across the street. Oh, I saw that, yeah. The big, it, they fall. The big I think there's yeah. like 80. All the ones that follow the sun. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what the, yeah, how much of an advantage or, I mean, it, they're probably more efficient, but. Yeah. It's, it, it's overcoming that uh, initial cost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's where you got to figure out what are you Well, they get the big write-off, right? Off, right? Then, yeah. then it's, it's doing more than paying the monthly bill for electricity. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. In, in a number of years, it'll be paid for and. Yeah, I mean, power is uh, probably one of the bigger expenses in wastewater, you know, right, to run all yeah. the equipment, so. 
that well, we talked about that, you know, like I said, back in 2008, 2010. Yeah. You know, talking about that. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> I've got to go back looking, you know. Um, anything else? Questions? Uh, I don't think I had any other paper today. I mean, I mean uh, honestly, it's, I think it's great to have you guys here. I mean, we always thought you should do it more often. Just a more little often than once and ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I had well, started some years ago, but yeah, we, it all we, felt we the did way it once since I've been on the board eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. We had a, not down here, have we? No. We had a board. We had a board. I mean, uh, I'd have to go back and look. Board subset <laughs> meetings, right? One for every board, you know, and just to, it's. If you sit together, you, you just share enough understanding, yeah. so it's well, like exactly. you don't assume well, what they are doing now. I can't remember what, but I remember coming down here and sitting <laughs> to a meeting here once. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so like you know, eight years ago. Oh, you definitely. Oh, yeah. Well, the way locations. the way the public talks about it, you think that when you hear about other boards and what they're doing, it's like every board sits in a cloud in a in a shrouded room and is, you know, plotting the downfall of everybody else. You know, the plan. Everybody's We're complaining not. about the planning board or the select board <laughs> or the you know. So it's. You know, yeah, it That's is good. Down here. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, uh, it's it good is to nice for us to come because then, if we feel the question, we have clarity to be able to answer that too without having to, yeah. you know, hopefully without anybody pounding at your door going, you know? and, and, so. if, and if you have more, you ask anytime because basically, yeah. you know, I've always felt it's an open book or a public entity. It is an open book. Well, yeah, it's, and it's also we're, we're happy about to share what we do. It's also weird how the 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 the, the, the things are separate, but also. You know, yeah. they're, they're, it's it's the Berwick, you know, you know, uh, sewer system, but it's not fully under the the board's control. But the board does appoint the member. It's a it's a. Well, Ralph and I were talking about it earlier before the meeting. You know, he said, "Well, why is it like that?" I said, "Well, I think you know, after the Clean Water Act came and everybody started looking at what we were going to do, the town actually made a good decision because." You know, at that time, Prime was hooked up, and the river would turn a different color every day, and everybody would guess what it was going to be today, and maybe the town sh didn't really want that responsibility, you know? <laughs> Let, design a separate district. That's just a guess. I'm only being silly, now, but I don't know what happened. But. The, the tannery wanted to keep control of it. Yes. You know, that's how yeah, and they, and, and they did. You know, right, like the big right. blowers and stuff, I found right. stuff Steve was involved a long time ago, and we're... The big blowers they had here, you know, we're trying to get VFDs on them to save money and power, and they totally nixed it because they bought everything, or 80% of it, you know. So um, there's a lot of things that they fought paying extra for that could have been beneficial. But anyway, that's all that. People in the town coming to you guys asking questions, even if you can't field the questions. All our meetings are uh, available on Zoom, our monthly meetings, so they would just email Jay mm -hmm. and request that they want to be a part of the meeting. He would send them an invite. Or they could come down here publicly. Do you be guys have uh, many members of the public come to your meetings? Oh, only when we do a rate change. So we do a rate change, <laughs> and uh, the torches and pitchforks <laughs> are <laughs> down. <laughs> as, you, as you guys know, when you raise taxes, right? Yeah, yeah, we're not like anyone. Yeah, right. We're it's, lower taxes three years in a row. No, it, it, this town has a history of people to wanting to, that. you know, jaw yeah. until yeah. Their, their mouth hurts. But not actually show up at a meeting to do something. Yeah, that's, awesome. that's, that's never seen anything like that. Never 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 there's a lot of tears and tissues created, but no yeah. one coming and doing yeah, something. Put it on the Berwick hate page instead of coming right. down and They, to they act out. like it's some nebulous, far away thing they can't affect. When all they have to do is come down every once a, every Tuesday, once in a while, they can say whatever they want to right then and there. But you know. It, we don't have a meet tomorrow night, do we? Yes, yes we, we do. do. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because remember we couldn't do that. We didn't do it last week. <laughs> you shouldn't have that question. <laughs> You're here now. Might as well make it work. We'll be <laughs> can't we do it now? Can no, we no. can't. No. Yeah. no, we don't have any other warrants. Be we because we made the offer, anybody wants to walk around a smelly sewer plant in the middle of the night? Yeah. Um, you're more than welcome. No, 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 I've seen no. it in the daytime. It's fine. <laughs> I doubt much. Is and the daytime tour is open for any yeah. time. Did you see the water coming out of the plant? It's been treated? In like, the river? Yeah. Kind no. Of, you can't see it. No. no it, come, it goes out to the middle of the river where the discharge point. The Dovis comes right out of a... Yeah. You can see it coming right out of a little waterfall where it's treated with, I think, mm -hmm. infrared or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, you can see I'll at the end of the contact yeah. chamber before... Goes to the pipe where it goes out. I mean, it's all. Uh, so you can see the water. It's pretty, yeah. How clear is it? Clear. Cleaner than it comes it's in. It's a lot cleaner than the river. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Like <laughs> <in the laughs> <days. laughs>
it, it's uh, interesting in that, uh, yeah, when Prime was here, for, we developed a, we have to have water for process. Mm -hmm. And uh, in order to not have to pay for the town, we had a, a pump and a well down by the river that they pumped water up in. It was always a pain in the butt. But after Mike came, realized that uh, the plant had been designed originally with an intake from the final, you know, after everything's done and before it goes to the river, to pull water from that back into the plant. Mm -hmm. And Mike rebuilt the whole system. So that's that, what you're doing now? We recycle yeah. our own water. That's they could, they couldn't use it because, with Prime because it was actually too dirty and you couldn't use it for... <laughs> you couldn't get it cleaned up <laughs> couldn't enough. Get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, with the solids. And, but with now, it's a fantastic awesome. system he built and uh, it works well. Uh, you know, they're doing gray water projects all over the West now. I mean, that's oh, yeah. that's the thing because you got them for irrigation. And yeah. I didn't realize the PFAs, we might have it in the water. Oh, yeah. Water? Well, that's what we're testing for right now. But what would you guess me, Mike? The thing is, it's in everything. What we asked the state when we went up there was so, what's a high number? What's a low? We don't know. <laughs> and they literally said, We don't know. So we're like, Okay, it's, what's it's going to happen at the end of this, it's this in the, study? It's in the public water a little bit, it's on, it's on, but it's still not. It's in the hard lines. It's in everything. Yeah, so it's, they, in the it's in the rain. It's in the rain. Don't know yeah. Yeah. So but when we get the number, then we'll yeah, tell you. Some of you, to you to might have to do something with it. Some of you won't. So, so really, they don't, they don't yeah. even know like what an acceptable range right. yeah, that's, is. That's right. yeah. They have some random numbers, but it's not a hard line where they're like, gotcha. this is definitely the health limit. They, they admitted it, which is cool. When the state yeah. well, I, mean, so I, I couldn't it. say, oh, I can't take your water. I mean, to irrigate. I've been drinking it for years now. You can't take that one. Right. You can't take our water and do anything with it, but our permit allows us to discharge in one spot, one spot only. We can't water our own lawns. Why? Because it's in our permit. It'd be this uh, what, what's their reasoning, Mike? I don't know, maybe Steve. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> well, yeah. you know, it's a controlled discharge, so if you want to do anything else with it, you got to get a permit. Yeah. So it's just Would it be permit. detrimental to water the backyard with it? <clears throat> Um, yep, in my opinion, it wouldn't no. be. But it wouldn't be <laughs> to the state. It might be a, called a spill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get a grasp on how they, you know, how how it would be. It, they probably would make you test to a certain standard if you wanted to put it on your lawn. Like yeah. they might say, "This is what we wanted you to test it for." Yeah, I mean, you're you're absolutely correct. Wastewater reuse is becoming more. Oh, it's getting huge. And usually, it's the disinfection part that they want um, improved upon. So chlorine disinfection versus maybe UV disinfection. Um, so those kind of things. We're doing it actually in Star Island. They're reusing their wastewater for flushing their toilets. They used yep. to use seawater. Hmm. And um, yeah, it's wastewater being used. It's working on a higher bacteria requirement. Yeah, that's yeah, excellent. I've seen some really neat stuff where they're building systems for big buildings, big high rises. Basically taking the gray water and yeah, treating it and yeah, recycling it for toilets and whatever. Yeah. The big savings, though, is not using the municipal water at the wastewater plant. Yeah. Because that's where it, that big cost is. What, what again, repeat that? Um, no. You know, the municipal water, the potable water. Yeah. Um, I think in the past we've had to use that because the effluent from the combined <coughs> wastewater. So we're not using any? We, don't, we only use city water for, like, sinks and toilets. The rest of the water that we, we use throughout it's the recycled. plant is recycled. Like, we make... Paul, I've been running polymer batches all day. Probably used eight, nine, ten thousand gallons of water for just that system. We don't have any, but a lot of treatment plants have seal water going to their pumps and stuff, and that can be plant water if it's clean enough. Uh, so yeah, if we go to city water, we're going to go over our limit, and the yeah. water district's going to send us a big bill. So we save a lot and, of money. Doing and reusing, you've only been doing that for what, like the last five years? Then is that? Well, they used to use river water. Okay. And but that in the winter, you'd get pipes freezing and breaking. Yep. It was it was a nightmare. When I started here, they were working on that more than they were doing anything else. Well, I said, thing? let's get rid of that. So we built our own system in the basement. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's so, good. Yeah. Good. Well, the other thing that's, that's uh, you know I appreciate about this meeting is just seeing that you know everybody's very knowledgeable about what's going on. That there's no People, they understand a lot of things that we don't fully understand. That's always important, you know, just that we, the right people are in the right place at the right time. And um, clearly stuff is getting done, which is, which needs to get done. You know, nobody wants to talk about it, but <laughs> somebody, no, has to, somebody has to flush the toilets, you know. We've had this communication talk many times over the last two months just between ourselves. Yeah. I'm not used to looking at an email or a text. You know, I, I like to get a 
phone call or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. this young kid here, he wants to do emails, you know, or text <laughs> often. I said, Send use the phone, call up. I'm coming here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, the he was born before the 1980s. He uses his phone as a <laughs> phone. <laughs> I just don't look at mine. <laughs> I'm telling you. I saw a great joke the other day. I was like, back in the early 2000s, we paid m- money for ringtones. Now my phone has been on silent for six yes. years. <laughs> Are you still paying for the ringtone? No. <laughs> I, I don't use a ringtone unless it nope. sounds like a phone is actually ringing. I don't, I don't, I don't need some space-age noise mm-hmm. to tell me when my phone's going off. Steve, thanks for your time. Now, how, Appreciate how many it. times do you use that water over again? It just goes back into the system and will run back through the treatment plant and go back to the final. So technically, you can just keep recycling. You could you keep recycling. Like this I said, we have 200,000 gallons of water we could technically recycle. Obviously, we're not using that much, but yeah, just good spray back into the system and keeps. Huh. There's a neat system, mate. Eh? I want to say Falmouth. I'm not sure. I went to see one time. It was, uh, you know, a, a mini split. I mean, a, a heat pump. There's one, one sewer plant that actually has a heat pump that they use on Navy ships um, where they use the water from the plant to pass through that heat pump and it does all the heating and cooling and it's really kind of cool. It's a neat setup. But anyway, we would talk about nothing. Thank you guys. I mean, anyone wants a tour? We're glad to go. Yeah. Other than that, <laughs> I'm still good before. It was very good. Thanks. Thank you for coming down. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, it was good.